Welcome back to the Dig podcast. What a lovely guest I have on today and one which I've been trying to get on for a while, but she is a busy woman. So I am so honored to have her here this morning. Annette Kelly is our guest on the Dig podcast today. And Annette, first of all, is a good friend of mine. And I'm just, she's a good friend to so many people. Um, but professionally, which is obviously this is a business podcast. I'm going to talk about business as well, but she's a personal performance and development coach who founded the brand Little Penny Thoughts, which is an online community, which started out as a simple positive wellness page, but has now grown into a major brand, helping people through their toughest days and weeks. Annette has over a half a million followers on social media and uses her platform for good. She's also the founder of Wellness From Within, which takes the format of events, both online and in person, and it addresses the key pillars of wellness. So we're gonna talk about that today because it's so, so important and we're so busy, busy lives, busy businesses, and you know, wellness is key to performance as well. So I wanted to have an app on the podcast for a few reasons. And I wanted her to share with you how her own personal journey resulted in this amazing brand, which is recognized worldwide and sold. She sold hundreds of thousands of products to all ends of the earth. So bringing your own personal story into a brand has worked for her. So I know so many people are really, really going to you know, get something from that. So um, I also wanted her to help all of us with our mindset, me in particular. So I struggled a lot recently with my confidence, my constant thoughts of how people are judging me, my second guessing of everything that I do. And this is a new thing for me. This is not something that I thought would ever affect me because I feel like I'm a strong, confident person. But to be honest, words can tear you down in the blink of an eye and I've been shocked by my response. So I know it's a common thing and it can happen to a lot of people, but let's face it, we can't let it really affect our businesses because our businesses are so important there we need to keep paying the bills so I've been searching frantically for people to try and help me and Annette's been one of them people so I know she's going to be able to help you you know as well there's something about her she touches people with her warmth and her down-to-earth ways and her genuine compassion sometimes to her own detriment because she's trying to absolutely help everyone and she's a great person and she's always wanting to help and that's all that we need in life is someone just batting for you in the corner to spur you on she's also an expert in her field and I can't wait for you all to hear from her I know I've rambled on a wee bit there but if that is important to give context to the business and also the mindset side of things that we're going to talk about in the podcast today Annette Caroline how are you so we'll have to get our makeup on there you had to get your makeup on you had to remove the mirror from the back wall. I, I didn't right? realize this has been recorded and then a wee bit of my vanity sat in and I had a hair on a hair had my hair on a bun but I couldn't call it a bun that was more like a, a pineapple or a mess. Going on. and I thought you know a nest that's the word you know the just the bun when you're going about the house and then I, I plaited my hair now just to make myself look a wee bit more podcastable is that, Podca- is that- you look you look podcastable you definitely do you're just an act the person that we all love but I want to thank you for being on the podcast today and I want to I've kind of give you an intro there and act but and I talked about your personal experience so, so can you tell us about your brand what is it for people listening I'm sure there's not that many that don't know but for those that are that don't know anything about you what is um, Annette Kelly's brand and, and how did it happen so for those that may not know or may know a wee bit about Little Penny Thoughts, Little Penny Thoughts was um, launched in 2015. And, you know, I can't believe that in 2022 we're, we're still here. But I'm more shocked, Caroline, that it's actually, it's actually a brand. It's actually a business. It's a company. But the, the most important thing to me at the moment is that it's a family run business. It's me, my sister and my brother. And I can't tell you the joy that brings me each day. But stripping it right back to 2015, Little Penny Thoughts was not born out of rainbows and butterflies. It wasn't born out of um, a business idea. It wasn't born out of um, happiness. It was actually born out of me being really, really low. Um, and I can I can admit that now as a mental health advocate, I think it's very, very important to be, to be honest um, if we want to try and break stigma. But... Little Penny Thoughts, and as cheesy as this may sound, was was my light because what I was doing was I was in my bedroom and anyone that suffers from low mood or anxiety and depression know how lonely and things can be and how your thoughts can get on top of you. And what I was clinging to, Caroline, was actual quotes. I was clinging to words of comfort and maybe I would share them an odd time on my 
an at Kelly personal Facebook page. And you might get a few friends, but like, are oh, you all right? And I was home oh, 100% because at the time I wasn't admitting um, you know, how I was feeling because of shame, stigma. Like I'm an at Kelly, I'm bubbly. I have a good friends, good family. I was a teacher at the time. So I lived a quite a private life. Would never have spoken camera like you. I can remember looking at you and the like you and Shana Fullen back in the day and thinking, how are these women speaking on camera? I thought only Americans do that. Ah! That's, that's the truth. That's my mindset. I thought fair play to them local women actually putting their face to camera. I would never be at it. Now look at me. Look at you now, I know. <laughs> but you know, the thing is with the likes of that, um, I found social media to be a place where I would have um, compared myself a lot. So back in 2015, the, the key areas would have been Facebook. Um, Instagram wasn't really taken off, even as a personal user for me. And Snapchat, and I would have compared myself a lot to other people's lives. And then this inner critic would have set in, and I would have talked to myself very badly, very badly, in fact, that it would lead me to believe that I was worthless, not good enough. And you know, really took me to a place not worth going. And I'm not saying that quote saved me, far from it. It'll take more than a quote to get you out of that. However, words can hurt or words can heal. And the words that I was reading on screen, um, maybe online or even in a book, I thought, I really like that. I want to share that. So I decided to create a safe space online, maybe to share words of wisdom, comfort, encouragement. But the thing is with that, I didn't want it to be an at Kelly. I just wanted it to be a positive space online or a safe space, as I said. And when I said this to my sister, and this is the beauty of having great people around you, and I know you have great people around you, Caroline, but never underestimate the importance of having people that back you and your weird and wonderful ideas. Now, like I said, I wasn't in the greatest mindset, but it was very hidden. Not many family members or friends would have known it, but I was on a slippery slope. Um, but I said to my sister, one night we're sitting in her house, oh, here, I want to like set up a Facebook page like of quotes. And instead of Orla saying, wise up, catch yourself on, she said, right, what are you, you going to name it? And I thought, I, I don't know. I don't I know. I just want a place for quotes. And to my left hand corner of my eye, her purse was on the table. And it said, a penny for your thoughts. And I said, a penny for your thoughts. And Orla's like, well, I don't know if we can take that iconic, you know, name, a penny for your thoughts. But maybe, um, you know, I said, what about penny thoughts? And she said, here, throw the word little into it. And that's where little penny thoughts was born. I put up this Google stock image. And Orla says, no, she's a graphic designer. She's like, my can't do that, I'll create a wee logo for you. And this was all just a hobby. This was playing about, Kjordi. This was just no intention of, of what would happen. And then I, I create, she created the logo and it's our logo to this day. And then all of a sudden, and it's not about likes or followers for me, but back in the day when I was new to this whole world, 50 followers, 500 followers, 5,000 followers. And I was I was trying to help my mindset at the time. So I was going to a local PT, Porrick, and he knew it was me. Not everyone knew it was me at the start. And he was all like, look how many this, 10,000 followers and that. I suck and know, but sure, what's, what's that about? I don't know. But the chain reaction or the ripple effect was happening through the quotes, not me. I wasn't speaking. I wasn't the face of it. I was nothing to do with it. I was just the poster. And I was posting you know, not even images that we created. It was other people's images, but it was the powerful words, whether it was on text or whether it was from Google. You know, I was sharing other people's images, not thinking um, what could be down the line. I said there was no agenda. Do you get me, Kiarni? There was no like intention. Oh, this is, I'm going to make something of this. It was never like that. I was just loving what I was getting comfort from is that people were sharing the quote and writing underneath it and tagging their friends saying, Mary, I think you'd like this. Mm-hmm. And then maybe Sue, check this out. And people were sharing it. And the followers grew at a rapid pace. And for me, it's never been about the following. But I seen firsthand the impact of social good, social media being used for good. And then Little Penny Thoughts became my safe space. Then I started to, no, I'm not saying that. Can I just jump in there? Because sitting, thinking about this from a business perspective, 
you were kind of doing it the reverse way without even knowing like building community so some people start a business and then they try to build community but you were it was amazing that you had built the community before it even turned into a business and that isn't doesn't always happen I know that but I suppose you knew your audience and who you were speaking to without really realizing and it res- the content resonated with them so much that's it that's it it was total it was if you can say it was un- unintentional but you're right and community is everything to a business you know and you know that yourself Caroline you know it's it's when people back you but you know that you're putting out maybe goodness into the world no matter what it is whether it's about positivity or well-being or whether it's about fashion or style or beauty no matter what your niche is you know you can still you know share the good no matter what your as a say niche but with the likes of little penny thoughts there I sing my goodness there's all this following, what can I do with it? And a business never entered my head. The first thing was charity. So I teamed up with um, Michaela Foundation, which is a a charity very close to my heart in memory of Michaela Hart McAreevy. And um, we created the original book of thoughts and the book will always belong to the foundation. We never replicated that book again. What we did was created a calendar down the line in 2018 when we became a company. But my first ever, um, I wanted to, as much as I love social media, what I wanted to do was get the words off the page or words off the screen and into a book. And that's where Orla then came in and she was a graphic designer. Now that was an experience and a half, the typos, the misprints, the delays and things like that. But however, when we did um, charity drives for it and the camps and stuff, it went so well. And then I kind of sat back and looked at that and thought, um, I've created something special here, or indeed we, I always say we, it's me and my sister. Um, she's like the, 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 she mightn't be the face that comes on and chats on camera, but you know, Orla knows she's my backbone and I, everyone knows this day that it's definitely a, a team effort. But it was only then probably as, as I became a wee bit unhappy in teaching, um, that's when I thought, what, I, what else could I do here? And it wasn't really my occupation that was making me unhappy. It's nothing to do with teaching. It was me and my mindset. Personally, I felt restricted um, in the classroom and I felt, you know, I would like to study more. So I studied to be a, a personal development coach. And then I, I went to Lorla and I wouldn't even say it was a business idea. I was like, you know, what, what, what if we create something that doesn't gather dust? You know, and that's where the flip calendar came from. And we did our research on that and we worked very hard at um, producing uh, a flip a flip calendar that people can use day in, day out. And it's just, it's still hard warming to this day with volume one and now volume two, but it's hard warming that it's on people's bedsides, lockers, it's on their kitchen windows, it's um, on their work desks. It's in their daughter's bedroom. And I can't tell you how much that one product has given me so much pride. The feedback I've, we still get from that product. And it's still our best seller um, because people get good from it. And if people get good from it, I get good from it. Um, and most certainly the, the bonus is that this is my livelihood now. This is my business. And it took me a long time to even admit that it was a business. I felt oh, nearly guilty because this was a hobby. And just stick to stick to your teaching and that. Keep your head low. Don't raise your head above. And I did. I suffered a lot, Karen, with worrying about what people thought of me. I used to get nicknames like, oh, there she comes, thinks she's Mother Teresa, or only banter. But at the time, I wasn't fit for banter. I was like, and is that what they think of me? They think I'm this do-gooder when I'm still in that. Love the crack, love the banter. However, I do have a good old heart. I hope so, you know. But the likes of, you know, oh, there she is positive pen I watched your quote of the day and this would happen usually kind of nights out now I can take that now I can banter back and forth and I'll give them the quote of the day and have the crack but at the start when you don't own your brand or own your business or are totally consumed by what other people think of you it can really stop you in your tracks so I think it's it's took me a long time that's why we might be you know we're seven years now as little penny thoughts is born but I really feel I've only come into myself this past four years I've started to own it this past four years I've started to get more savvy you know within within myself in terms of the people I connect with the people I listen to 
and realizing that what other people think of you is none of your business. Now that's that's all well and good when you know maybe you get a bit of flack here and there, but the goodness and the kindness I receive on a weekly basis totally overpowers any shred of negativity you get. But I do think that is the way of the world at the minute. Um, I don't think it's acceptable and there's definitely people get a harder time than others. And I'm not saying that I do get a hard time online because I, I, I don't. I'm just a very, very odd time. Maybe we cut and comment um, because people um, don't always accept that your intentions are pure, Carly, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to business. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, this is what, and we live in a very small part of the world. And, you know, it can, and when you put yourself out there, you know, it can be very daunting. And you know, when we when we when we were growing up in a rural maybe community, we were told just to keep it low or don't raise your head. And now it's great to see so many people and women coming out and just saying, you know, this is my this is my dream, this is my ambition. And social media has been a real voice for people to do that. And I just love the type of person I am. I love seeing people succeed. And you, know, you really do. And sometimes I have to stop and act and go stop praising others what about you like she's always like you're doing great and like I'm so proud of you and all and, and, and I'm like whoa 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 what about you you know so I I, I want to take this time to you to just think about you and what everything that you've done so we've talked about um the calendar and how like like I'm, I'm sure it has millions and millions of impressions on social media like I mean since it's been launched millions and millions like I see it all the time and the the biggest celebrities pages to the small person that's just using social personally like it's everywhere and that is not like there'd be brands and businesses listening that are thinking I've been trying to achieve this and I can't but I think the magic is that it's connecting and helping your community so if there's businesses and listening and they're trying to think of that product or that service that gets that kind of reaction online especially is it helping their community is it helping that niche that you know you're good at and I suppose it's trying to get them to think that way enough because that's kind of what's happened to you because it is, it has been so helpful like you know probably you know the word I would say would be you know organic it has been organic but that's not that's not always how businesses work I understand that now and as you say I did a kind of back about front um but always remembering your way every business has to have a way why are you doing it and if it's to make money you're shooting yourself in the foot in my personal opinion because you'll always be chasing the coin do you ever hear that saying chasing the coin <laughs> that's a real country saying however it it's not about the money you know yes you need money to live it, it you know it, it pays your bills it you know it pays you know it, it, you understand where I'm coming from but if you are starting a business or if anyone has an idea let the idea drive you and let the let let the idea drive you let the excitement of what it could be like I have a friend at the minute and you know obviously I can't say anything but next year she's launching a business and she's gonna take Tyrone by storm anyway and I am there saying you can do this there's a market for it. I believe in you. And when you have people around you that say that they believe in you, sometimes you start to believe in yourself. I don't know that's for me, but people can tell you all that all you want, but it really has to come from within. You have to have this inner belief. You know, I, for the first time in my life, Caroline, I believe in myself. I believe in our brand. I believe in what we're about because I know what I'm about. And sometimes it takes you a while. I, for years, I didn't know who it was or what it was. I was just floating along, loving being invited to all these events. I would have wanted to open of an envelope. <laughs> you know, whereas now I'm like, whoa, how long on that? What are you spending your time on? Who are you spend your time with? This is what I mean, being more savvy. And now like, I just love her. Like, so we took our brother on full time there, which is class. He's such an asset. To the, I can't even explain what he's done for me and Orla. You know, but I want to take on more people. I want to grow our team. I want... Um, and I love our meetings now and I love bashing ideas and I love being challenged because mm-hmm. I used to think I had to make all the decisions, but I don't, I can share, I can share that, that, that share the load. Um, I'm very protective over the brand. It's like a wee baby. However, um, now I'm willing now not to clench on so tight and let the magic happen if we're, if we're going to grow further, you know. So talking about growth, um, we've talked about the organic side of 
people just sharing it because it's helpful and it's connecting with others. But there's also other ways that you have grown and you stand out um, for doing this on social media and that's collaborating. So you are always about building other people up yeah. on your way. So talk to us about, because I know there's businesses listening and collaborations like the buzzword at the minute and there's maybe a lack of understanding about how that works and how to you know, make it benefit your business. So what maybe talk to us about some of the collaborations you've done and how that's been beneficial. So personally, I collaborate with people over brands. So I get to know the person first. And then if I believe, well, obviously, like believe in what they're about and admire their brand, I'm in, right? And in terms of collaboration, you have to be very careful. Is it aligned? You know, is it is it something that will will good come from this, you know, in terms of both both audiences and maybe both customers? But our first ever collaboration, which it was just, it, it really came out of nowhere. Um, it was with Kiarma. It was from Argento. And I, we, it was like, definitely, I, I was totally, I didn't really know what I was doing, neither did Orla. And we were just working along with the girls and, you know, it went very well. But then off that, the girl that used to work with Kiarma, she launched her own Seek and Find jewellery range. And that's when then I worked with the person of the brand. And we created a gorgeous um, necklace, a lovely dreamer's necklace, which I love, which hopefully maybe down the line we'll, we'll bring it back. We're in talks for the new year. Um, another collaboration we've done quite recently was with my good friend Sarah and Paul, um, Ted and Stitch. And we created um, a lovely apparel range, you know, of one day at a time, which is our slogan for our diary. And we did beanies and, and hoodies. And that was just so much fun, you know, shooting in Benone Beach and really bringing the social to social media and two friends helping each other build their brands. And then it, it, I really loved that. Uh, it was one of my favourite. And then recently, um, I've been working along with um, Sliced Meals, which is a local throne company. I'm very passionate about local throne-based companies. It must be the... The Carrick Moore woman in me. I don't know. I'm all, I'm all about that type of keeping it local. But there was something about um, sliced how they emerged from lockdown. And I know I got um, talking to Laura, um, the owner of Sliced, and how she built a brand. And you know, and when she said to me that she wanted me to come on, I I didn't know where I fitted within it. But I could only come on if I could have like a wee bit of um, involvement. You know. Within, within reason. So recently we created a, one of my favorite dish, the teriyaki noodles. And like, to me, when I was getting my weekly box, that's what was missing from it was mm -hmm. my teriyaki noodles. So I got into, I got to go into the kitchen and, you know, Russell's things up with the chef and taste test and actually see what's going on in there. And so once again, if I'm going to collaborate with someone, I'm, I'm all in. I just don't do it for the luck of it or for how it looks on social media. I I get behind the scenes and um, really want to build a rapport with the brand. Now, that's not always possible when maybe it's a bigger brand and there's different things. But um, I start with maybe keeping it local for now and who knows in the future. Um, I'm, I'm very much into the personal touch, Caroline, mm -hmm. and often to my detriment. I know this. However, that's how I operate at the minute and it's, it's, it's working, um, but there's nothing better than teaming up with um, local um, and Irish and you've done that so many times yourself and really, really seeing it work and really I think see, just know, listening yeah. to you there, like um, the people are think, probably thinking, well, I did collaborate and it didn't work or whatever, but you said something very key there about you're all in and you know, people can tell when it's superficial and on the level, but when you get in the kitchen, you see how the other business works, you get to know the team, you know, that's the social behind social, if that makes sense. That's what people want to see on social media and that's how collaborations are successful. So there's something in that there for people that are listening. Did they delve deep with the other business? Did they showcase the other business to their audience as much as you wanted them to showcase yours? There's a two-way thing in a collaboration. Absolutely. It's a two way street and it's not about your following. You know, there I've had um, proposals in the past, you know, that a lot of pressure was put on my following, you know, all, you know, your reach and, you know, how many people would see it and all this here. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't even, I'm not a very data driven person, Neve. 
they, we would work along with Neve from Digital 24 and she's she is the data woman but I leave them at that whereas me is I'm you know of course a tap and an odd time to to your data and your insights but you know the likes of if you're consumed by that it's not healthy either I I used to be you know it used to consume me Caroline how many people unfollowed me per week how unhealthy is that I wasn't looking at the people who were following or the people that were still hanging about I was focusing on my follower list going down I think I lost about a thousand there when I went to America <laughs> yeah and why was that like if you were trying to figure out the psychology of that well because like that's fine you know I don't know if people want to see people's holidays or people having a good time maybe they're not in that frame of mind and that's okay I probably am the same myself I haven't followed loads of people too in fact I've muted loads of people because there's some certain things I don't want to see now, what I wouldn't do was write to that person saying, here, I'm unfollowing you. Okay, uh-huh. <laughs> and I've got that. You know, we're just, um, I don't agree with that. I'm unfollowing you, no problem. You know, it's, it's a free world. You can follow, unfollow, but we have to be so just kind online. Like, an unfollow, honestly, unfollowing doesn't bother me because at the end of the day, it's not, in the broad scheme of things, it doesn't matter. But if you're at a bit of a low ebb, you start to think, what did I do? And you take it all personal. So that's what I'm trying to do now, Kiorin, is to remove it being so personal and treating it as a brand and as a business. And that's kind of how, that's kind of how wellness from within has grown into like a sister brand nearly of Little Penny Sauce, isn't that right? So talk to us about wellness from within. What is that? The wellness from within is my workshops and events, right? So it, it started probably in 2018 as well. I actually did my first event down in the Kjartan House in Dublin. Like, and the reason why I went down to Dublin is because if it was a flop, nobody up here would know about it. You know, that's the, that is the frame of mind. But it was a really successful event. Didn't have a clue what I was doing, but really enjoyed it. And then I parked that for a, a good few years because um, maybe things got busy with little panny thoughts. Also, my mental health was going up and down. And, you know, in order to deliver workshops and, and events, you need to be you need to be on it. But what I did start to do was summer series of events um, in cafes, local cafes around the Newry, Oma, Dungannon, Cookstown area, um, even in Belfast as well. And I loved that small numbers, big impact. And I love the coziness of cafes, people grabbing their wee coffee, having wee special guests. And I, I've done I've done them quite recently, a series of summer and winter and autumn and spring events. And it was always um, within my comfort zone. Now, for those who don't know what wellness from within is, um, it's all about your mindset, nutrition and fitness. Now, <laughs> nutrition and fitness is in my area. That's why we get people in to talk about that. Um, people that are experts in their own field, mindset is more my area. As you know, and I love interviewing people and getting, you know, getting people in that inspire me in order, order to inspire others. Now, the next step for me, Caroline, was to do um, a theatre show, right? Or a theatre, you know, brings wellness within that theatre. And I was like, oh, I'll not do that. Nobody, nobody will come to that. I'll just stick to my cafes. It's safe. Um, and also cost cost effective too when you think of as a business because you know events yourself there's a lot of outgoings and what if it flops you can let the what ifs steal from the what could be as such so I would have I would have stayed in my comfort zone for a very very long time until there just over the summer I decided I'm booking the Bernabin Theatre and it's going to be on the 20th of October a meeting, a meeting with them and all of a sudden I was in the program and when I was in the program I thought how do I take this down how do I because because online it can be taken down but when it's in a program it's it's actually printed and I just I was going to one of my wellness from within events um I, I took on a wonderful girl there um to help me with wellness from within and she's just she's like my orla when it comes to um, wellness from within, her name is Michaela. And I said to Michaela, I can't do this. I need to ring them and take it down. And she says, oh, no, you'll, you'll be doing it. You'll be doing it. Just settle yourself. Went and did um, the workshop and Source in Cookstown and really seen people getting value from that the event. And then that spurred me on to, to um, Cookstown, which is happening on the 20th of October. And it's nearly... So- 
I was at the Women in Business Conference yesterday and um, they talked about opening your mindset to opportunity. So that's kind of what you've done there, like realizing the opportunity. But yeah, I know you've battled back and forth with should I, will I, won't I, but you have done now and you've sold, like when we put this out, which will be next Thursday, that is the night of your actual event and you are sold out and we're all going to be there cheering you on and like loving life that you're helping us through the things that we're all going through and yourself, like you've openly admitted you have all the struggles that we all do and that's why it's so real. 100% and my big crippling factor that I will always battle with is my inner critic. You know, and I've spoke about this on numerous podcasts before and, and, and in person, if you've been to any of my workshops or any of my talks, I have an inner critic and her name's Geraldine. Apologies. Oh. Apologies to all the Geraldines out there. It's not um, it's not personal. I just personally don't know at this time of naming my inner critic. I didn't actually know a Geraldine. And that's what the girl that I was doing CBT with encouraged. If you're gonna name it, make sure it's no one that you know. And you know, Geraldine would have took up so much precious space in my head, the areas between here and here. Um is where you need to really work on. It's the, it's the most important place that, you know, your ideas and your thoughts and feelings are stored is your mind. But she would have um, squatted, you know, she didn't pay rent, she left a wild mess up there, didn't add any value. So I had to evict her and I continu- continually evict her. So my inner critic, even this morning, coming on this podcast, Panic and thinking, am I good enough to be in Caroline's podcast? Will I give any value to her listeners? These are the thoughts that can stop everyone, no matter how successful your dean does. People say to me, you're flying. And me could be full of panic. I'm thinking, flying. I'm flying into the wall or flying. You know, I'm like, I feel like sometimes I'm tree, you know, like a tree hopper, you know, and then just feel like um, sometimes I had a bit of a wall, but that's okay because we're only humans. And this is reality. And I think with the likes of business, you know, my, my business, my professional, personal life are intertwined. And I, I find it difficult to separate the two. But what I'm better at now is looking after myself more. You know, I try to speak to myself in a, in a kinder way. I try and back myself and say, you know, Annette, if you're going to be telling everyone else that they can do it, you need to be telling yourself that you can do it too. Because then you are being authentic. And as a personal development coach, I know that I'm good at building other people up, but I'm not practicing what I say to other people. So I know that I have to turn the light on me and think right in that. So if you're going to tell other, especially women this, you need to shine that light on yourself and believe that you can. And I, one person said to me there quite recently, Annette, don't worry about the how, how you're going to do it. Just remember the why. So next week when I'm in, in the Bernavan, my why has become a reality. Why am I doing it? I want to uplift, inspire and empower, you know, every single person that is there that night. Um, and then in return, I will feel inspired, uplifted and empowered. It's, it's, that, it's that ripple effect. Um, and everything I do, I know, comes from, from a good place. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one thing that keeps me sane in this whole crazy world. Yeah, you know, my, my intentions are pure, um, but my vision is also very strong of where I want to take wellness from within. I want to take it on the road now. And I think when I get, you know, the Bernavan under my belt, which is on my doorstep, then let's go to Belfast. Let's go to Dublin. Here, Caroline, let's go to Dubai. Oh, let's go to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god can you actually imagine oh I know, my god. or new york maybe new york but you know what oh my god. i just so think and i, I, think and I have a many it. many a night out and um but we definitely need a more retreat style night out or weekend instead of the nights that we have but we yeah, they're, all, they're, all, they're all good for the soul too but i just want to talk to you about something you just said that resonated with me so you said that you can't as a personal development coach that shines a light on others and builds others up and tells others that they can achieve what they want to achieve, you have to be authentic and be able to do that within yourself. So that's happened to me recently, whereby I coach businesses 
on how to move forward from the barriers that they're faced in relation to judgment of others and negativity and um, really being pulled down by others, both online and in their own personal circles. So I, I have always been an advocate for that. I've stood in stages like you and said to people, this does not matter. We have a vision and a goal for our businesses and we need to pay our bills and you can't let them stand in your way. And I've said all the words and I meant it and I still mean it. However, recently this has happened to me where I've been the one that has been faced with the negativity, the horrible comments, the pulling you down with words. Um, and I am shook to my core where mm. I am shocked by my reaction. I'm shocked by the fact that I never thought I had to really look after my mental health because I felt very strong as a person. But I've actually in the last few months been um traumatized by the way it's affected me more than actually what has mm -hmm. happened if that even makes sense so I reached out to you I know and we talked about a few things and I thought maybe and I know that other businesses and other people let's get the business side out of it people that own businesses are also affected by this and that and I feel like my words aren't strong enough anymore because I've let it affect me so bad I feel like I need out, outside help so mm -hmm. what tips could you give me and yeah people who are listening that are being held back because of negativity, because of judgment of others um, to tackle this. Like, have you any words of wisdom that can go deeper than just don't worry about them, what their opinion doesn't really matter. Is there anything deeper that we can do or say to ourselves? If someone says to you, don't worry, that's like saying, don't think of a pink elephant. And what are you thinking of? A pink elephant, you're already worrying. So someone telling you, don't worry, you're still worrying. Or if someone's all, oh, don't worry about them or blah, blah. Of course, you're, you're, it's, 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 it's hurt you. It's hurtful words. As I said back to the start, words can hurt or words can heal. And words can be very piercing. And especially those that are typed. However, what I do want to say that if you are getting um, negativity via in person, via messages, via anonymous messages, by fake accounts, you have to really, really sit back, right? And I mean sit back and realize this has got absolutely nothing to do with you, right? Because would you ever take time out of your day and do that to someone else, you personally? And by no, me knowing you personally, Caroline, I know you'd never do that, right? So you're already, you're already in a better place than that person. Now, I'm not saying that some people in pain, some people that are in pain cause pain, but that's not a good enough excuse when you're targeted, when you are, you know, just really, when hurtful things are said to you, it's very, very easy to fall into, are they right? Is this what people think of me? But you have to remember that those people actually don't know you. They're not your family members. They're not your friends. They don't really know you, right? So even though you have a platform online or your business is online, and this goes to anyone with a, maybe a platform, people don't actually know you inside out, you as a person. They can only have a perception of you. And unfortunately, people have opinions. And it's what we choose to do with those opinions. Um, I've got to a stage at the minute where other people's opinion of me, they don't matter as much as they used to. But my friends and family, my like people that love me and that build me up, I really, I'll listen to them. So I'll never go to someone for advice that um, I'm not close to. Do you understand, Caroline? But when, when we're faced with um, hateful comments and negativity, mostly anonymous, you know, I'd rather someone come up to my face and say, this is what I think, because then you could have a conversation with that person. But when it's anonymous, it's just so, it's it's just like a, a stab in the dark. Do, do you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, your head goes into overdrive of who's saying that? Why are they saying that? And you start to beat yourself up. For me, something practical that I have done in the past, if I've received maybe a negative comment that's maybe got me down, um, I would sometimes brain dump, right? So it's getting the, getting the pen and getting the paper and writing down, whatever's in your head right and you get everything down on paper and it's a bit it's a bit awkward at the start you feel stupid at the start when you're writing what I did anyway felt a bit stupid this was advice given to me and it's worked 
And I write down, I look at all the things that is bothering me in my life at the moment, stuff that you need to get out. And sometimes you can't verbalize because often people don't understand unless you're going through it. When you get stuff down, pen to paper, write it down. Then you think, right, circle what matters. And you circle the thing that matters the most. And then you think, how can I tackle this? What action can I take, right, to tackle this? You can't stop negativity from coming. It's impossible because it's other people's actions pushing on to you. But what you can do is try to build resilience in order to grow strength and courage of your reaction to it. And sometimes the best reaction is no reaction at all. However, when it's having a detrimental impact on your mental health, you want to talk about it. I know, Caroline, you're a very private person and that you don't want to talk about it, but you're actually trying to put a, a voice behind this and saying, look, this is not on, this is really affecting me. You know, it may make people go harder, which is really, really sad on them because how miserable must you be to sit behind a screen and honestly and tear down another woman or another man or another business that are just trying to earn a living, trying to do their best. Some people do it publicly, some people do it privately. If you're on social media, you put yourself out there because you don't have a choice. This is your livelihood. So Caroline, in your personal circumstances, you went from a place of safety in your shop. It was all about day children's wear, but now you have grown outside of your shop. And the bottom line is, some people simply don't like it, but that's on them and it's not on you. And I know that's easy to say, but you sometimes have to think, why am I being attacked? And sometimes, and I'm going to say it as it is, some people don't like to see other people doing well. And that's sad, but that's, in my, in, in my opinion, true, that the better you do, the more you're going to be ridiculed and people will question your intentions. Your intentions, Caroline, are still as pure as the world as in Diggs Children wear. They're still as pure as you do when you do your charity drive initiative. And they're most certainly pure every business you team up with. Building, building people up, giving them a platform, working with them, getting the hard hat on. You know, I, I, know. I, I see what you do. Not everyone will get that, but it's not up to them to get. I know. I've had a realization. I've had a realization recently, just like what you're talking about there. That's always going to be that way where people um, perhaps don't like you or don't get you and all. And I can't change. I've realized recently I can't change that. It's my coping mechanisms like you talked about. So you saying about the brain dump is good, writing it all down, right? One thing that I find has helped me recently, and that, and hopefully people who are listening to this can maybe put this into practice too, is um, distraction and replacing. So um, if I feel those thoughts creeping in, and they always creep into me at night when Jared goes to bed and I'm sitting on my laptop doing my work, the thoughts start to creep in. It's like a wee creep coming into the living room when I'm sitting there and because because he's gone and he was distracting me and all. And it's your own. You know what, do you know what they are, Caroline? They're ants. <laughs> Automatic negative thoughts. Oh, right. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was a, okay. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be covered in ants, especially no. at night when it's, that's your downtime. You've had a busy day. You've been working, you've been a mummy, you've been a wife, everything. You don't want ants to wreck your downtime, you know. And then your downtime is actually getting peace with your laptop. And I know you enjoy that because the one time a night, maybe that you can get at something that you need to really get at. Because maybe you don't have time during the day. I understand that. However, to challenge these automatic negative thoughts, I believe in the three C's, right? So for me, it's about catching the thought, challenge it, and changing it. So catch, challenge, change. And see when a negative thought comes to me, for example, today and this morning, you're not good enough to be in Caroline's podcast was a thought. So that made my confidence dip and I got all nervous. She's seen me earlier. I was nervous for some reason. So what it was, was doubting myself. So I caught that thought that I wasn't good enough. I challenged it. And I says, well, if Karen didn't think it was good enough or bring value to her um. You know, to her followers and her online community, she wouldn't be having you in it. And I changed it. Just chat to Caroline like you're chatting to a friend. And then I ease myself then in. So if you if you catch your thought, challenge it and change it, it doesn't like it's not a miracle cure, but it does help you unclench your jaw. It helps you relax a wee bit more physically because when we have these negative thoughts, they make us tense up, they make us anxious, they give us palpitations. 
And I you know I've, I've certainly been there, no doubt I'll be there again. But I realize that I can't stop the thoughts from coming, Caroline, but I can try my best to challenge them and realize, is what I'm saying here thought or a fact? So it's not all thoughts are facts, right? Sometimes our brain, right, likes to play wee tricks in us and makes us feel that everything we think is a fact, but it's not. It's not thoughts aren't facts. It's, it's merely an opinion. Unfortunately, what's happened is other people's or opinions are pressed upon you. And then you start to think, well, is that true? But, you know, when you do the inner work on yourself, this is what wellness from within is all about. You know, little penny thoughts is all about the written word, but wellness from within is about the spoken word. How are you talking to yourself, right? And it does take, and because some people have natural resilience, they talk kindly to their, themselves and they're happy-go-lucky. But sometimes when they're hit with maybe a challenge, maybe we don't have the inbuilt, inbuilt skills to cope with the, the challenge that they're faced. But the good news about resilience, and coping skills, is that they can be taught. And there's so much help out there. You know, there's, you know, there's talking therapy, there's breathing workshops, there's yoga. Some people turn to prayer. There are so many ways that we can try and silence that inner chatter that makes us feel like a piece of crap, right? Because you know, do you know when you're saying all of that, and this is no disrespect to those things, but in the past I would have listened to that and went, yeah, 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 yeah. But actually because I've had to search for things to help me. Oh my God, all those things you've just said. Like I, I reached out to people and we'll probably share some of it on the podcast, like guests and stuff, because it's really helped me. But I mean, I, distraction. So when those thoughts, those, what do you call them? Negative, the ants, what do you call them? Automatic negative thoughts. When the ants fall in, when Jared, Jared O'Neill goes to bed, the ants come up the hall. It's like a physical thing, right? And they come into the room and then I'm like, oh my God. I'm starting to think about all of this. Like, are is people judging me and everything I've done today? Um, am I going to get negative messages now? Am I going to, what are they going to be saying about me? I'm like, and then I stop and go, Caroline, this is not good for your mental health. I close my laptop. And do you know what I say? And I know this isn't for everybody and it's absolutely not, but I pray, right? I'm sorry to say a prayer. Just mm-hmm. one week prayer. Please, God, help me not let this stop me do my work. That's what I say as I walk down the hall and take my makeup off. And I've now realized that time alone at night is my trigger. And I try to stop that for the time being until I feel stronger. So that's how I um, distract myself. And I say a prayer and take my makeup off again to bed and the ants are gone. And, and it's that now I know the triggers and now I know how to help that. And it's actually helped me really well in the last seven to eight weeks. I've started to really see where that's helped me. So that's, but that's, um, is that's, that's a coping mechanism. Yes, yes. And I, I just want this podcast of trying to resonate with anyone that's going through that at the minute. About if it's stopping them in their business, the judgment of others, the negative opinions, we actually opinions, we actually can't stop people from having an opinion, even if it is negative. We just have to learn how to cope with it ourselves. I was trying to challenge it in my head. Like, why are they saying this? Why are they sending me these messages? Why am I hearing this stuff? But actually, it's that's never going to change. I need to change how I react to it. So if a business is listening or a person is just listening to this for not in business, we can, we just need to find the ways that help us and it's possible. And this can be happening. It's not just if you have a platform, this happens. Absolutely not. Ripples. This happens in communities, this happens in workplaces. Yes. That people let the opinions of others and the bitchiness and the gossip really, really, really overpower them. And when you're not that type of person, it hits you more. It does. And like, but Karen, I want to ask you a question. Like, the only way it will stop is if you stop. Are you gonna are you gonna down tools? Well, I I in the summertime and I said to Jared, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. Like mm-hmm. imagine me saying that. Me, the person that loves my job, loves my people, loves my community. I was like, I'd just rather do one-to-one mentoring at night or during the day with businesses. And I don't want this. This is not what I signed up for. I just wanted to live my life happy with my family and 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 progress and help people and, and be a happy person. This is not making me happy if this is what's happening. And he said to me, Caroline, like Jared, anybody that knows Jared, like no Jared, some boy. There was some way. So he goes, Caroline, this is what you're good at. And this is what you love. You cannot let what these people think about you or are saying about you stop you. And, and I was like, I know, I know. But it didn't matter what he said. And that, that's how I felt. And that was a fleeting moment of I don't want to do this anymore. And it took my resilience and my, my, my determination to find a way to not let that 
stop me to get me where I am now, like say yeah, two months, three months later. But but it was it was it scared me that for a, a day or two, I was like, you know what? Just throw that phone away. I can do anything. I can go and work in a shop. I can I've got retail experience. That's what was in my head. How scary is that for me to stop? what yeah. I want to do and that's a that's a prime example of letting the opinions of others and other people that actually don't care about you or your family stop you from fulfilling your purpose in life and if I was to listen to the people that maybe made me feel silly back in 2015-16 if I listened to the what are you at or what are you doing what's this about or oh here she goes again I would be miserable but I'm it's just it's building this, this level of resilience that Yes, of course, you're human and words will impact you, but not to the not to the detriment of your mental health that you're really going to feed into it. It's what you give your energy to. Energy goes where energy flows. And if you're going to like, I will not tap into if I, if, for example, if I see any negativity, if anyone likes to send me negativity or oh, this has been said about you, I ask them, please don't do that. You know, and you're like, I've never I've I've listened to me, I've listened to podcasts in the past, you know, that has mentioned trolling, but I've never heard this question being asked. Do you for anyone that is giving you a hard time, do you have anything that you'd like to maybe say to them or maybe ask them or you know, just um a- no, I, first of all, I'm I would I'm scared to do that because yes. I'm scared of of what would be said. But I suppose if anybody's online and they're thinking about being negative, work like those that one line that you can say about somebody can actually cut them, like affect them deeper than you'll ever know. Mm-hmm. And and I would never have thought that until it happened to me. And and you know I suppose I just I don't know I, I, I feel scared to talk direct to anybody that is being negative online. Who even is that person? That's what this has done to me. Fear the fear. And normally I'm like. I don't care. I'll say yeah. anything, but actually I'm scared. Well, personally, Caroline, like I've seen, I'm, I've seen how it's affected, affected you. I'm very proud that you're actually speaking about it. And because there's so many people that are afraid to speak about it in case you get more. But and then- you know what? The only reason why I am speaking about it is because I have a business community that it's affecting them too. And I could do my own inner work and and get over this and yeah. never and never talk about it. But actually, so many people um talk about it in my uh, business community about how they can't move forward with perhaps putting themselves out online because they're afraid of what other people are going to say. So I do think this will help people and to see that that even me that's the advocate for speaking on social has it's affected me greatly that's the only reason why I'm talking about it because it can help other people because otherwise I just try and fix it myself without being vocal about it but I mean I do think raising awareness about it should help others and you know it's not it's I don't think I'll ever will ever be able to fix people and not going and talking about you or anything but uh, we need it we need to learn our own ways just to be strong because it's going to life's not easy sometimes just that's really yeah. and that's why it's so important you know to surround yourself with the right people and like you know focus on um what who you do have around you and you're as I call them the true blues you know and they're they're the people that know you and they're the people that are going to you know, be there to, you know, because we're, we're all, we're always going to go through, you know, there's going to be um, highs and lows, you know, whether it's in your personal life or whether it's your business. But I do think if you, if you surround yourself with the right people, you'll, you'll always feel safe, you know, and I know that the online world, I can often feel unsafe. Um, in fact, on Instagram, I'm very careful what I post now, but on TikTok, I can be myself. It's just strange. I can't explain it, but mm-hmm. I'm trying now just to like, do my do my own thing try my best and like try and really remember that the people that want to come along with you and support you will that people will get you that'll vibe with you and I do believe that your vibe attracts your tribe and what what you put out you'll always get back um and that's focusing on on the good and hunting the good but also tuning into maybe what is not working or what is getting you down you can't ignore these things no point shoving things on the carpet because you have, you know what do you have to do like the carpet has to be lifted sometime you, ha- you can't you can't just bottle things up it's, it's good to talk and it's, it's one thing with me with little panic thoughts and wellness and within I actually as uncomfortable as I am being vulnerable I know it's important because when you're vulnerable you're real and then people can connect with you and that's that's where you're maybe helping others and even the likes of you speaking out there today, you know, 
as I said, a lot of people would never think that you'd be affected. They think, oh, Caroline O'Neill, tough as nails. Even the toughest can be affected by piercing words. So there's a lesson here. There's a lesson in this podcast. Um, and there's a lesson to really, really do the inner work in yourself to build resilience so that if you are faced with challenges and tough times, that you have the tools to not fight back. It's not about fighting. We don't want to fight in this world, but just even to protect yourself. It's all about protecting yourself. And I think, you know, your toolkit, your resilience toolkit, your coping skills, what you're doing outside of work, you know, we can, you, you'd be a real worker too. You're in work, work, work. What are you doing outside of work to ensure that you're able to cope with the stress? You know, it's a pure juggling match, and I, I definitely and, take my hat to parents and all that there. But um, and you know what? This has um, even though I wish that didn't none of this kind of happened. It's actually making me stronger because I'm learning all these things that I never knew about that I can actually then you know. But if I had just kept quiet and put my phone down and went and got a job in retail or because I had I've experienced there or started to just do online mentoring and not really come away from what I used to do, then. I would have been very unhappy probably for the rest of my life. And did I really want that for myself? No. So that's why I searched for the ways to try and work through it. And it's going to be a battle now. I know moving forward, as long as I'm online, that I'm going to be able to see or access or, you know, hear the, the negativity. But I'm going to try to continue to look after my mental health. But Kiara, what about the good? Like, oh, the good. You, the and, good. I know, and I know you don't like talking about yourself, but the likes of there, you know, when I went to the dig day out, and I seen our that room in our ma and women laugh and having the crack socializing, especially after what everyone's been through this past two years, been locked away. You know, I just seen, oh my goodness, look what look, look at that's community. That's I know that's joy, and that's what we focus on here. And then that's the, the domino effect. Because by me saying that, I was like, I can totally do wellness from within. You know, I you made me believe in myself. And that's the importance of like how many kind messages do you get per day or nice, just even banter with you know your your community or the people that do get you. And see when you focus on that, other things can melt away. They're still there, they still still annoy you, of course, but then it's that thought replacement. Sometimes you sometimes you have to hunt the good. Um, you have to look for the good because it's very easy to look at the the negative or let fear set in but when you try and replace that with well, what is actually going on here like what is the good coming from the social media awards which was a deadly night it was one of my favorite nights ever like hosting ways so like, for anybody listening Annette was our gorgeous um unreal host for the social media awards and she brings a level of energy to a room that a connection really in that is what you do yeah. like so the banter the good vibes the positivity was everything we could have ever wanted and everybody flipping loves you and like and it, some people and the other breath could think you're a dose the could okay. the could the could and, and that's been said to me oh, you're you're a wild dose online but you're a good crack and I thought sweet above I don't take that offense that's just an opinion and everyone's entitled to their own opinion but I'd rather someone say that to my face exactly honestly to be honest I know I know and right I feel like you've just like did like a whole therapy session with me there and I'm sorry if people are listening going what the hell but I do believe there's value there in all aspects of life not just business but what are the plans for little penny thoughts and wellness from men so we're going to Dubai with wellness Dubai, we're definitely we're going international but that's that's a, that's a big goal to go international someday but I'll just I'll stick to Ireland for now there's lots yeah. of people saying to me will you come to Dublin will you come to Belfast and I'm going to listen to them people I'm going to do my best and I will, I'll, I'll definitely plan for that. Um, well, and some of them, I want to run more events. I want to meet my community more. Um, and I want to, to, to build upon the three pillars of wellness, nutrition, mindset, um, and fitness. And I do believe that now more than ever, events like this can really help people. And that's why I continue to do what I do. That's my way. In regards to Little Penny Thoughts, we have loads more new products coming. Um, for a long time, we just had our one day at a time in our time, one day at a time diary and our calendar. But now we're adding to the product line. We hope um, to get into retail. That's a, a place that we haven't haven't been yet. We've just done it, done it all in house. But in order to grow, um, hope to to get into to stores. And we have a vision for that. 
Um, this week we're launching our One Day at a Time 2023 diary. Um, and it's my favorite one yet. Um, and I'm so, so glad I didn't listen to that inner voice telling me not to do it. Um, because when you have that wee bit of self-belief, that wee bit of um that bit of confidence from within, that's when that's when the magic can happen. And it, it starts and ends with you. And other people can tell you this and tell you that, but unless you believe in yourself and what you're about, you can be the driving force to make things happen. So my new um my new motto for 2023 is to make it happen. Make it happen. happen. Love it. Love it. Love it. Let's um yeah, let's just take time now after all of that to process that. Yeah, thank you so much, Annette, for everything, for your friendship, for your advice, and for your um honest sharing of your knowledge. It really means so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Caroline, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Dig Podcast. That was an emotional one for me and Annette. But you know what? I think it's definitely going to help someone. It's helped me just to get it out there and share it with my community. Remember, if you listen to the podcast, remember to screenshot and share on social, tagging Dig for Success so I can reshare on my platform. Until the next time, thanks for listening, guys.